the ship was under the guidance of a local pilot when it ran aground, right? If a ship runs aground while under the guidance of a local pilot, isn't the pilot or the pilot's association supposed to be held liable? After a little over a month of being stuck in the Chesapeake Bay, the container ship, motor vessel Ever Forward, has finally been freed. As you may recall from a previous video I made about this topic, the Ever Forward left the port of Baltimore on the 13th of March and headed towards her next port in Norfolk, Virginia. The ship was under the guidance of a local pilot, which is required by law, and while channeling through the Chesapeake Bay, apparently the ship missed a turn and went completely out of the narrow fairway and into the shallow waters, where eventually it got grounded in deep mud. Over the next couple of weeks after the grounding, salvage operations were carried out which mainly involved dredging the mud around the ship as well as attempts to refloat it during high tide using pulling barges and tugboats in the hopes that the vessel would budge and eventually be free of the mud. Dozens of dredging boats cycled through the bay during the past month, digging up mud and transporting it to Poplar Island. At least 160,000 cubic meters of material, equal to about 64 Olympic-sized swimming pools, were moved in a concerted effort to free the grounded ship. Unfortunately, those initial attempts failed, which eventually led to the decision to remove some of the containers from the ship. This phase of the salvage operation started on April 9. As per reports, they managed to do this with a crew assigned to two cranes rappelling up and down the container stacks for up to 12 hours a day, every day, since lightning operations began. The containers were offloaded onto barges, which then returned to the port of Baltimore. Finally, after removing around 500 out of the 5,000 containers on board, the latest attempt to refloat the vessel was carried out on Easter Sunday, April 17. Taking advantage of a full moon and a spring tide, two pulling barges and five powerful tugboats managed to dislodge the Ever Forward out of its muddy predicament. Once refloated, the ship was towed all the way to the anchorage area south of Annapolis, presumably because the water is deeper in that area and much more convenient for divers to examine the ship's hull. Sending divers is pretty much standard procedure after a grounding incident. Even though the ship was stuck in mud, there is still a possibility for the hull to have suffered some dents. If the divers determine that the hull didn't suffer any significant damage, then the ship will head back to the port of Baltimore to pick up the containers that were offloaded and eventually resume her voyage. Now, the US Coast Guard or any of the concerned parties have not yet issued any statements as to the actual cause of the incident. As always, it could either be a steering gear failure or human error. Whatever the case may be, one thing is for sure. Evergreen Marine Corporation, the owner of Ever Forward, will be the one paying for this. Well, insurance will probably cover most of it, but still, liability will fall on the vessel and effectively on the ship owners. But wait, as I mentioned earlier, the ship was under the guidance of a local pilot when it ran aground, right? Now. I'm not saying that it's the pilot's fault, but a lot of people have been asking this question, so just for the sake of discussion, if a ship runs aground while under the guidance of a local pilot, isn't the pilot or the pilot's association supposed to be held liable? The quick answer? No. In almost all countries, pilots are protected by law and 
A common clause that those laws share goes something like, the pilot only has an advisory role. The master remains in full control over his vessel and its maneuvers. Some of them even go so far as stating that the pilots are essentially the vessel's borrowed servant, which effectively insulates the pilot and the association or whatever governing body there is from any liability. In short, the vessel remains liable for all damages, even if the vessel, in fact, is under the effective command of a pilot. So, in the end, it's still going to be the ship owner who will foot the bill. Oh, and in the case of Ever Forward, since the ship owner has declared general average after the initial refloating attempts failed, this means that the cargo owners, yes, the ones who hired the ship to transport their cargo, will also be required to contribute to the salvage costs before their cargo will be released. Now, that's going to be quite painful for the cargo owners if they didn't opt for general average coverage when they ship their cargo. For more information about general average, you can check out this video. Link is also in the description. I have covered that topic last year during the Ever Given Grounding in the Suez Canal. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it informative. As always, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.